you know, you're on your feet a lot. You got to you got to be very careful about your shoes. I always tell my staff, I was like, I'm like, what are you wearing no shoes for your bartending? I'm like, you get some padding down there. You're going to be there for 12 hours. Your joints are going to need this later. <laughs> Welcome to Seriously Catherine, a podcast about taking your business seriously, but not yourself. So this week's hot take is all about my girl, Britney Spears. And, you know, people have opinions of her, like she's going a little cray cray. I think she's always been crazy, which is why I love her. But this is like, let me see if I can take it home here. So Justin Timberlake, I guess, just came out with some new music or he's recording something new. I don't know. I don't really pay attention to him. But he was the musical guest on Saturday Night Live. So Dakota Johnson was the host. And it just sort of irritated me and, you know, the world that, you know, even though Justin Timberlake wasn't the host, he still stood up next to Dakota, like, during her monologue. And I feel like, you know, didn't have to say that he's hosted five times, didn't have to, like, be there anyway. Like, he was just the musical guest. Like, be the musical de- guest guy. Like, why you got to, like, steal somebody else's show? And then today, there was an article came out on TMZ, I think, that Britney Spears is apologizing for, you know, what she wrote about Justin Timberlake in the book. And I am, like, not for this. Like, why is she apologizing? She has nothing to apologize for. Like, I doubt that Justin Timberlake is even thinking about Britney Spears anymore. Like, he's on this other, like, you know, path in life. But it just, like, kills me that, like, why why is she apologizing? Is she, who, Did somebody put her up to this? I don't think she should be sorry. You don't have to support this guy. You can just, like, forget about him. Like, I'm sure he's forgotten about you. But I do like Justin Timberlake's music, so I'm a little conflicted. But I just, I don't know. Justin Timberlake doesn't need another fan. He's good. He's fine. He's married to Jessica Biel. She's a badass. Like, let them just do their thing, okay? And let Britney do her thing, which is dancing on Instagram, and I love it. If you are living in Saratoga and you haven't been living under a rock the last couple of weeks, you have seen the stories of the cat nabbing in Saratoga. The first one that came on my radar is the owner of Saratoga Broadway Delis, whose cat kept getting stolen. Essentially, the Daily Gazette reported on Dan's cat, his name's Phil, they would witness their neighbors trying to take their cat out of their yard. And that is just like ballsy of those neighbors. And then it's just like, it's awkward, right? Because then like they're your neighbors and now you know they're out to get your cat. After the story broke, like all the comments on social media were like, some people on the fence about like, he's a bad cat owner because he doesn't bring his cat in when it's cold outside. And then there are other people who are like, oh my God, the neighbor are stealing cats that's not cool they have these like survival instincts if it's cold outside and they have a place to go they go inside phil has a collar on his neck so it's like if any neighbor was concerned about the cat they should probably call the name of the collar and then you know bring the cat to the doorstep but i mean it sounds like this cat was getting grabbed from the yard but then like a week later there's this other story that comes out about another deli owner in saratoga who I think was getting sort of fed up with the neighbor's cat always coming to their deli. And I guess the deli employees would talk to this cat and the cat would come into the deli and everything. And I suspect that maybe the health department was involved and like maybe gave the deli owner like a warning, like you got to stop letting this cat come into your deli because it's a health issue. The issue wasn't resolved. And so he took it upon himself to bring this cat who he knows the owner. He brought the cat to the shelter when the shelter was closed and he left it there. And then the cat like went missing. Now, some people say that they, he's on camera throwing this cat over a fence, which I just I can't even imagine. Like what kind of person would take a cat and toss it over a fence like into the woods? These cats have kept me up, like, kind of thinking and contemplating, like, what the hell is wrong with people? But I do feel strongly, like, I have a very strong faith in karma. And anybody that would throw a defenseless cat in a very cold night over a fence into the woods to die has got it coming for them. Just to reiterate and recap, these are two different cats. These are two different delis. All in Saratoga, I just like implore you not to get these places confused. And, you know, guys, just be nice to the cats in your neighborhood. This is Saratoga Springs, okay? This is not what we want to be known for. A full recap and the full story is on Saratoga Living After Hours, so go and read that thing. But, man. 
On this week's episode of Seriously Catherine, I am joined by my friend Ryan McFadden. So Ryan and his wife Sonia own Henry Street Tap Room and Kindred, both on Henry Street and right next to my other business, Saratoga Paint and Sip. And, you know, we opened these businesses the same year. We also have two little girls that are the best of friends. And we talked all about starting a business, moving to Saratoga, having kids, working with your spouse. And, you know, it, it took a bunch of twists and turns. It's a great conversation, and I cannot wait for you to listen to it. So let's get started with like, where, who are you? What do you do? Like, who your, am your, I? your perspective. If only I knew. I um, was thinking about this on the, on like this morning because it's like, God, there's so many things we could talk about and, and dig into. Yeah. My wife and I own Henry Street Tap Room. If you're a Saratoga local, you may be aware of that establishment. And also recently opened Kindred, which is right next door and used to be Flatbread Social. Uh, we moved up here about 12 years ago um, to open Tap Room, thinking it might last six months. And then it'd be back to Philadelphia. Uh, I used to be a lawyer. Sonia was a teacher. And now 12 years later, we have two kids and two restaurants. So four kids, we like to say. And uh, and Belle. And Belle and my dog, who's the the, the easiest of, of everything. She's great. So, yeah, that's like a, a basic summary of who I am, I guess. Yeah. And then the, before you were an attorney, you worked for ESPN. I worked for ESPN. I technically won an Emmy, me and about 5,000 other people. For working on Sports Center, but it sounds cooler if you just say Ryan McFadden, Emmy Award winning Ryan McFadden. <laughs> but yeah, so there was that before. I originally wanted to be like a sportscaster out of college. Um, at some point at ESPN, I decided I should go to law school because I wanted to work for myself. Uh, I did that, and then I was a lawyer for four years, and then uh, a bunch of personal circumstances sort of led us up here. And now I do this, so... And um, so Sonia went to Skidmore. That was like the Saratoga connection. Otherwise, yes. like, did you ever, you know, like there's a lot of Jersey people who come up here during the sure. track season. So like, had you ever been to Saratoga? Yeah, I mean, I'd been here just like with her friends for like reunions or like to meet up with her friends okay. to hang out. I actually have cousins in town also. But really, that was the connection. We'd come up here and hang out a lot. You know, she grew up going to Lake George. So we'd stop here and we were like, you know, there's not really a bar here that we really like. Mm -hmm. We were trying to open a bar really in Philadelphia or New Jersey at first, but it's extraordinarily expensive and difficult to do with liquor licensing and things like that. And that's and, how it is uh, in Louisiana, too. You have to, like, buy the license. You don't just get right. to apply and get it. You have yeah. to, like, acquire it from another <laughs> license owner. It's so yeah. stupid. Yeah, it makes it really t – someone's got to go out of business. There's, like, a bidding war. And and that's why so many restaurants companies. in those cities are, like, you know, multi-generational, right? It's just, like, passed yeah. down to different They hang on kids. to it. They're not letting it go right. because it's so hard to get one. So, yeah, here you can just apply for one. I think they're cracking down on it a lot more now than they were 12 years ago. You know, we were looking at spaces on Broadway for about a year. It was like a casual thing. They were like, oh, it's a pipe dream. We'll see if it ever actually happens. And then the spot where Tavern is came open, and nobody really wanted it because they thought it was too far away from Broadway. We, A, kind of wanted something off the beaten path, and B, didn't really know any better when we got here because we were coming from a big city where, like, you know, being a block from somewhere is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Saratoga is very used to driving and parking in front of wherever they hang out. And yeah. I think that's changed a little bit now, but a little bit. That's it. Then we expanded it and it's still going. So we actually just had our best year ever this past year, which is great. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like that's something you, you say often, you know, whenever like we're talking, like, how's the restaurant doing? First yeah. of all, I hate that question when people are like, oh, how's the business yeah, doing? You're like, it's like, do you, which part of it? Do you yeah. want me to really tell you how it's going? Because <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like on the verge of like yeah. blowing the place up. You want to hear about the stress or the good parts? Yeah. I usually stick to the good parts. Yeah. Well, you have to. I don't actually think they care. <laughs> They're just like, they don't know what else no, to talk to you about. They just, right. And they, they, so that if you have a business, it's a small town. If you have a business, people know the business. They're like, oh, how's it going? So it's just like, they're just making conversation. Yeah. So I just keep it light. Yeah, everything's it, great. Everything's great. Everything's but for awesome. but for for the tap room, everything is really great. Everything's great. We have a great. We've always had a great staff. You know, the business is, has been great. Adding the patio in the summer has been a, a huge boon for us. Yeah. Uh, which was a COVID thing, which was very necessary at the time. And now it just gives us some outdoor space in the summer, which really helps. But you didn't have the patio before COVID? So we had that little patio. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like the outdoor the eating and drinking yeah. stuff that we had to like fight tooth and nail to get. Exactly. It was so stupid. Yes. And prior to COVID, we always wanted to share that alley, remember? Like, yes. Kind of oh, like yeah. Patty's does. Yeah. And I remember we got an attorney to kind of like help us sort of figure out and navigate how to do that. Yeah. And it was sort of like the ultimate decision was like, this thing is never going to happen. Yeah. And then COVID happened. And then we got, got to take like, over that okay, whole alley. Okay, you can have it. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. No, it's great. I love that alley now. But yeah, so that's been huge for us. And 
plan on decking that alley out a little bit this summer to like make it a cooler place to hang out. But business is good. And you know, we've got enough years now under our belt where our name's more out there. I mean, I used to go to beer events all the time, even after we opened for six, seven, eight years and people in Saratoga would be like, where's Henry Street? Where's Henry Street? I've never heard of it. I don't, I don't even know where that is. I'm like it's right off Caroline. It's right off Lake. It's a couple blocks from Broadway. They're like, no, Lived here my whole life. No idea. So another took another, a while to get the word out. Yeah, <laughs> another statement that is just so infuriating, you know, yeah. like just a complete unawareness of like even just like being nice about it. You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> right. I've never heard of that. It's, yeah, like, it's like see where the library okay, is. Like, well, this you know. is my whole fucking life. Yeah, so right. if you could just acknowledge my existence or at least be polite about it, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Nope, your street doesn't exist. Sorry. <laughs> it does though, man. Tell people. Come on. That's true. Um. Yeah. So Payton Zip opened first, just yes. for the record. I know, I know. For yep. the record. You were the first one down there? Scallions, I guess. Scallions was the first, yeah. Virgil's, and then Payton Zip. Yeah. And the bead store, actually, OG. The bead store, I forgot about the bead store. Yeah. Um. Lot, I tried to buy the bead store, she wouldn't sell it to me. She was like, no. Oh, really? Yeah, she's like, I am literally just closing, and it's not for sale. Which is sort of like, what? I don't understand. Huh. I mean, being a business owner now, like if somebody showed up to you and were like, I want to buy your business, I would consider it. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I would sit down How with you. How much money do you have? <laughs> yeah. I would, I would always listen. I always tell our staff, I'm like, everything's for sale. Someone's like, someone wants to buy this water bottle. I'm like, for how much? Yeah. 20 bucks? Yeah, sell it to them. We bought it for two. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. yeah. And it's, it's, worth, it's always <laughs> like worth what someone will pay. Yeah. Right. So talk to us about closing flatbread social yeah so we closed flatbread or go back in time yeah. and serve it was mary monk it was tis now it was then tis it was mary now monk. and we opened tap room and then it was mary monk and they closed and you know we had kind of had our eye in the space for a while and we opened flatbread and we got it going and then covid happened and it was doing all right and it covid just sort of destroyed the labor force and made everything super expensive and when it came down to it, sell, you can only sell a pizza for so much money, right? It's like no one's going to pay $40 for a pizza. That's just not going to happen. And usually people are coming in, splitting pizzas, having one beer and leaving. So the profit margins just weren't there. You know, we were busy in the summer, which was great. But then as soon as it got cold out, the sales would just drop mm -hmm. until the next spring. It was just too much work for what we were getting out of it is basically what it was. Yeah, I mean, and this Unfortunately, is... Unfortunately, because I missed the pizza. Yeah, it was... It was The pizza was really good, and the vibe was awesome. Like, you felt like... I always just, like, felt I was on vacation, like a tropical vac vacation when I was in there. Yeah, so it, we wanted it to feel opposite from Taproom so as not to compete with Taproom. So that was, like, an intentional choice. It sort of looked like Southern California in there. But what we found also is that... In the Adirondacks, people don't want Southern California in January <laughs> and February and March. So yeah. uh, that was a mistake. Learned that lesson. Yeah, but you're right. It did have like a different vibe to it. It was very yeah, bright. So then, there. so now we have Kindred, which I was one of those people that was just like, this may not work. Yeah. I'm sort of like digging my heels in and I was like kind of upset because flatbread was such a vibe and it was great for the kids. It was like, you, it was. you didn't feel bad if the kids were like running around like banshees. And mm -hmm. so I was concerned about that. But Kindred is freaking awesome and I love it. And thank you. It's like a vibe too. It's a different vibe, a but different it's different vibe. Yep, yeah, totally different vibe. Um, I remember Mark sent me a picture. I must have been out of town or something he sent me a picture he brought zia there for like a date and i was oh, like yeah. i don't know if it's like a real kid kind of hangout but she liked it she liked to bring kids but it's it's not like flatbread yeah 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 the goal not. wasn't to have people bring six kids in there and then yeah yeah there's no shuffleboard no that's in my basement that's, and that's yeah. there you still have one at tap room though uh we still have one at tap room yeah yep. so if you know yeah. if you want that you can go there still have it yeah yeah and, and kids do a lot of the people that i used to see at Flatbread, I used to see them at both. Now they're just always at Taproom playing shuffleboard. Yeah, because so. it's just, it's more, it's 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 louder in Taproom. I feel like if, yeah. if people are getting rowdy, it's like acceptable. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. It's just more casual. It's more of a vibe. It's more of a bar kind of feel at Taproom. Yeah. Kindred's a little more sophisticated feeling. And, you know, so it, it doesn't feel really... fancy. You feel fancy. fancy. I don't want people to think it's too fancy. It's but, not too fancy, but yeah. you do feel fancy. Yeah. So I've had people like, can I wear this? And I'm like, you can wear whatever you want in here. Yeah, that's that's that wasn't the goal. But yeah. Um. Okay. So what are you working on these days? What's new? I mean, do you feel like you, pa past COVID you can breathe? Um. Or is it just like? Sort thinking, of. Yeah. It's it's, it's much better. I mean, there's no question about that. As far as like the labor force goes, it's way different than it was. I mean, finding people before was. I couldn't even find bartenders at Taproom. And the bartenders at Taproom make like a lot of money. Yeah. And I couldn't even find that. It was unbelievable as much unless finding kitchen staff and food runners and things like that. It's now it, it, it's different. It's definitely opened up a lot now. A lot of people are back in the industry 
you know, kitchen help is always hard, but it's way better than it was. There's no question about that for sure. Yeah, Peyton's a sort of like a well-oiled machine that just keeps rolling. And, you know, originally we thought that would just be a six-month, like, trendy business. Right. Remember, I mean, I do vividly remember everyone saying that. Everyone saying, like, you better have a plan B. You better figure something else out because this is this is, is not going to last forever. Well, that's what everybody says about everything. And nobody nobody knows anything. I, I feel like it's just like everyone's like, well, this, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. I'm like, you, nobody knows what's going to happen. You certainly don't know. Yeah. And especially like with businesses, people always have very strong opinions. I mean, I'll hear people talk about a, a certain business in town very negatively. And then a month later, someone will tell them it was cool. They're like, oh, I love that place. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, my God. So people you... change their mind real quick, especially if, if a place starts, that something starts to take off, then they're yeah. like, oh, I've always loved it. I'm like, you, you were a hater in the beginning, but that's how it goes. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about, like, confidence. Like, where do you get your sure. confidence? And then you also work with Sonia. Like, you guys, yeah, this definitely. is like a legit partnership. You know, mm-hmm. Mark and I started out that way, but very quickly realized that, you know, we weren't going to stay married if we continued to work together it, it like that. It can be tough, Yeah. Tell us about like the conversation between the two of you. Like, okay, yeah, we're gonna move ourselves to Saratoga Springs. This is, again, this predates to kids, so maybe right. it was easier conversation. But it's like, yeah, yeah, we want to move to Saratoga Springs. We're gonna open a restaurant and give it a go. Yeah, I do think that if we had had kids, it would never have happened. I'm positive it wouldn't have actually. Part of the reason that we moved up here is because we didn't think we could have kids. So we were just like, you know what? If we're just doing like our slow march to the suburbs, let's at least go try something fun first. So like that was kind of like the idea, and we always had this like hobby of like beer and cheese and going out and taking classes and things like that. You know, we had like a book of like a pipe dream of like what our bar would look like, which is what Taproom is. It's like what we wanted a bar to look like. It was scary, to be honest with you. It was. It was just like, you know, there's a big risk. There's a lot of money being risked here. You've moved. I mean, you can always move back, right? But you're that gambling sucks, a lot though. of money. It sucks to yeah. move back as like a failure, you know? Yeah, but like, oh, it didn't work. Uh, anyway, get my job back. Like if there. I ever move back to New Orleans, it's going to be because I want to open up a business there, not because like I, it didn't work. It didn't work out yeah. in Saratoga. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Confidence. We just were kind of like, let's just try it and see what happens. And it was, it was very scary. There's no question about it. I was real nervous, especially when you get here and people start saying things like, Oh, if you're not on Caroline, you're in trouble. If you're not here, you're in trouble. And you're like, I think we're going to be okay, but are you making me a little nervous? Yeah. Um, but then when we opened, I mean, honestly, it was, it was successful immediately. And I, you know, very, the community has always been great to us. Um, we've always had a really solid staff since day one. And it's just like, I remember the first night we were open, we didn't know what to expect. We're like, are, like six people going to come in or we didn't really know anybody in town either. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was mobbed and it just kept going and we were shocked yeah. at, really, to be honest with you, uh, in a good way. Well, so. it's just like, it's a, it's, you put a lot of, you can tell you put a lot of thought into it. And, and also you and Sonia were there every, every night, every single night you went in there, you were there or she was there sh- shaking hands, kissing babies. And I think a lot of that has to do with the success of it early on is like people really want to see that they're supporting like where the money is going. It's, yeah. And you're working your ass off, you know, I think that goes a long way. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, we were there. Yeah, every night. I didn't even give anyone a key until we were open for six months. So I would wait there with the bartenders till 4.30 in the morning, come back at 11. It was it was a lot. Like, I, I definitely couldn't do that now. Now. Yeah. Um, especially even if I didn't have kids, I couldn't do it now. I'm too old. But Was it 13, 12? It was 12 years ago? We'll, uh, we're, in our, we're in our 12th year. Yeah. So, yeah, we just had our 12th New Year's or whatever. Yeah, and you can tell the loyalty that you have, like because you have a big celebration on on the anniversary every year. Yes, you get T-shirts made October twelfth. Yeah, yeah, and people show up, which is I love, and I I like to remind our staff of that. I'm like, people don't have to give a shit about this business; they really don't. There's a million restaurants in town, and people do show up. All of our old employees show up, like friends show up, customers that have been coming in for years show up. Um, and it ends up being like one of our best sales days of the year. And it's just, it's fun. It's fun to see everybody. And yeah, it is really cool. And it's really humbling that that many people care and show up. It it really means a lot, actually. Where else can you go? I mean, there there is really no, I'm trying to think. I'm not trying to like bash anywhere else, but it's like, it really is such a great neighbor. It's a neighborhood bar. No, thanks. Yeah. And you don't, where else can you go? Uh, I mean, well, you, there's other good spots in town. Well, certainly. you don't count because you know everybody. Yeah. Um, where does one go if they're not you? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to promote other businesses, but I mean, it's like, um, you know what I, I mean, know. though? Yeah, like, there's other spots in town, like the local is like on the west side. They get a you know, kind of a similar vibe, I think. And 
There's some other spots. So for us, the way that we look at it is we want to see what's going on in the city. So like what works in the city, both of our restaurants, we want the vibe to be like you're in New York City or Philadelphia or Boston or some other major city like that. That's sort of what we go for is like places we've seen there, like Taproom is a mix of like the Blind Tiger, which is my favorite bar in Manhattan and a bunch of other places that we used to go to. And Kindred is basically a mix of all these really cool wine bars that we were going to in Brooklyn. And the idea is that like just bringing like a little bit of different sophistication to Saratoga in a way that I think not now. I think now it's it's caught up a lot, but it used to be sort of behind, whereas every kind of bar here was the same and restaurant was the same. And we like to bring in like a cooler factor. You know, that's the goal anyway uh, that you might see in a city to here. So when Taproom has evolved now, I mean, it's very, you know, it's wood, it's cozy. It's, you know, the wood burning fireplaces are super popular. Um, but that was all just based off of, you know, really cool places that we had seen in the city. And that's where it came from. The neighborhoody part of it just sort of happened naturally. You know, you don't really, I know the community a lot better now, obviously, than we did when we moved here. We didn't know anybody. So I didn't really know. I mean, we knew what it looked like and, you know, I had some family here, but otherwise we didn't really know much. Now it's sort of very clear, one, how small the town is. It's so small. Yeah. And it gets smaller by the day. You go out, you you know everybody, which is can be a great thing or, or a bad thing, depending. But I think I have a different view of what the town is now after being here for 12 years than when we just showed up and we're like, oh, this is a cool little town. Let's put a cool little bar here. Yeah. See what happens. So. Yeah, I mean, and what do you think about, like, the evolution of Saratoga, like, based on the, like, I can't, I sometimes can't even remember, but, like, when we opened Paint and Sip and you opened Tapper, like, I think Druthers was not even opened yet. So the same year that we opened, Druthers opened, Boca opened, one more that I think has since closed, but there were, like, there was sort of, like, everybody, like, it seemed like saw Saratoga for what it was at the same time and opened all these businesses, <laughs> like, it was like everything sort of had this massive changeover in 2012. Uh, Druthers opened two months before us. Polk opened two months before us. It was just sort of like everything started to flip and new places kept. Elizabeth's Table, I don't know if you remember that place. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. That was yeah. in this, was that in this building or the Algonquin? I think the Algonquin. It was in the Algonquin yeah. building. I remember um, that. I went there once with Gretchen. Yeah, I think I went there once too. But yeah, there were... There was a lot of happening at that time. So as far as the evolution of the town, even since I've, you know, we've been here, buildings have gone up. A million more restaurants have opened. The style of restaurants have changed a lot. I know that some of the people that grew up here don't like it. They sort of like hate that it's not the old Saratoga. Yeah, I mean, change is hard for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, they want to be able to just keep everything status quo. And I, I'm not that person. I get so bored. I yeah. want to like keep growing, keep evolving, developing and why not? It just makes it a cooler place to live. I will say that one thing I don't like, though, is that after COVID, all the money that came out here that's making it impossible to live in town for people, I don't like. Like, yeah, it's this is financially subject, pushing Ryan. people. I know. <laughs> it sucks. It's really... For me, personally, you are just We got fine. in beforehand. But you it's, got in uh, beforehand. It's, it, it is. It's too bad because, like, my old Avery House Street, which was, like, I, I still miss that house. I miss that house. Yeah. That neighborhood was, like, perfect for young families. And now they sold my house recently for twice what we bought it for. Yeah, it's like crazy. It is crazy. And then y'all bought a house on North Street, too, that y'all did rent, right? Uh, was... With Sony's mom, yeah. yes. And then we Airbnb'd that out half the time, which the neighbors... Didn't like. Really didn't like. Uh, and I, I kind of get. But they were very, very aggressively against it. And they were very nasty to us. So we sold it. Sony's mom got a smaller place. And then we bought the house that we're in now. So Yeah. But also... Like, it's just sort of a testament of the people who live here. Like, they give a shit what's going on on their street, and they will show up at a public hearing oh, yeah. to talk about it. <laughs> They'll, they will voice their opinion loudly. I mean, those public hearings, I don't know how many of them you've been to, but they're they're interesting. <laughs> they're frustrating I, to go to. I know, but I, everybody's got a thought about <laughs> something. I mean, some of the people just show up there every week, like the same, like, five people, and just like, and I have an opinion on Lot 75. I'm like, no, you don't. Why? Who cares? Get out of here. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> you care. Come so, on, man. Get Netflix. Use my Netflix subscription. Just yeah, go home and find something else to do. <laughs> I The last one that I went to revolved around short-term rentals because yeah. at the time we had an Airbnb and I was sort of like on both sides of it because we had a, a home that we were renting on Airbnb. So we were like the host. And then we were also renting our like home home. Right. And so that was like the big argument. Like if we keep allowing Airbnbs and we're going to, you know, people are not going to be able to afford to live here or whatnot. So it was like a huge debate. And I'll never forget this woman came from the town of Greenfield. 
to complain about short-term rentals. And I'm like, you don't even live in this city, lady. Get out of here. <laughs> right. The line is like two hours long and right. she stands up after after so many people were Said you know, the same speaking thing. Yeah. Of, of, or everything irrelevant. And like she walks up and she's like, well, I'm from the town of Greenfield. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like I wanted to throw, yeah. you know. Why are you here? That should be disqualified. Beat it. It was bad. It was bad. So anyway, we've since sold that house. But the ho- the housing stuff is so stressful. Like the house it we is. have right now under contract, which I just eventually will, will happen. I believe It'll it. Yeah. But it's the fourth house we put an offer on and the first house that we actually got under contract because yeah. these out of city people people like transplants, you know, which I'm sort of to sound like a hypocrite because yeah. we're that, but you know, they're just like dropping cash. They're moving from really big cities like Boston and New York City and they can afford to just like drop 500 grand in cash on a shithole. Yeah. That's like walking distance to downtown. They have the time they knock it down and put up a, you know, that's right. million so dollar house. There are there are like, you know, things in place to sort of they're stop working that, on it. right? There like are, the yeah. Saratoga Preservation Historic yeah. System. Pre- what is it? It's uh, Saratoga Springs Society. Preservation Society. Sort of like, well, good. Put the kibosh on some development if they don't believe that it should go there. Well, but there's you also can't these just, big companies buying house. houses now, which they're they're trying to prevent from happening. So, yeah. like, I think there's a thousand houses in Saratoga that are owned by corporations, which is ridiculous. Isn't that crazy? Thousand houses that are owned by like just as a money making vehicle from like big corporations that have no intention of ever living there. I mean, that that will ruin the town. Do you, you think you know, that you that's that. like from a business standpoint that that's a good investment? Yeah, I, I do think it's a good investment. People want to be up here now. And I think a lot of places people discovered it during COVID. I and mean, it's a quick drive from New York, Boston, wherever. But it does kind of ruin the charm of the town and the character of the town, I think, especially if you, you live here, obviously. But if the whole town becomes a rental town, it's that's not cool. You know, it's fun just, to come visit, but it's not, it, it will make it less fun to live here if like, I know, you don't it, live in a neighborhood with your friends and like, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. I just, like, I just don't think that's going to happen though. Like you go, like our kids go to a school right downtown. It's like, it's not hurting, you know, like there's kids yeah. that go to school there. It, yeah, you're right. And people that have houses now are not going to sell them, especially if they have families because where are you going to go? Hey, right, right. Yeah. You know, there's nowhere screwed. to go. People are like, oh, yeah. you could get so much money for your house. Like, and then what? You're going to move somewhere else and kind of have the same problem and, I don't know, not worth it. Yeah, you would literally have to – you would have to move to Clifton Park. And even there, I, Clifton Park has a lot of cash, I think. It seems I like. think so, too. I mean, it's I a booming – I hate Clifton Park. I'm sorry, Clifton Park. <laughs> but I <laughs> can't a, stand it. There's a Chick-fil-A there, there now. I would never know because if I can avoid it, I do. I do know that there's one there. Yeah. Well, I wanted to sort of ask you about when you first – you know, it's it's hard, and I experienced this too. Like when we when we first opened Paint and Sip, like a, like six months in, there was like rumors that there was going to be another Paint and Sip opening in the area, and it got yeah. me like a little, you know, a little anxious. Where it was like, okay, wait a minute, is this market big enough to support another studio, and where's that studio going to be? And then that that is really what dictated me opening in in Latham. Mm-hmm. And I know that you are aware of other things opening. Sure. Do you take that as like oh shit moments where you got to like up your game, or is like oh this is very valid validating this is legit you know and so i should just keep going like i want you to sort of like dig into that experience because it can be hard to not get frustrated yeah definitely so i would say that when we first opened when i heard that new restaurants were opening it would bother me i'd be like oh no this new place is open and they're going to do this this and that and it's going to take some of our customer base away and uh competition competition but now i don't feel like that as much i just don't because one you can only worry about what you're doing. Some like I've seen enough restaurants open since we've been here that it no longer is like something that really bothers me when it happens. And also, while it is competitive, we're all competing against each other. Everyone knows each other too. And everyone's like cordial with each other. No one's like Quack. that guy or Quack. this business. Like it's not like that. It's yeah. a small community. All the business owners know each other, respect each other. Yep. And want each other to do well. Yeah. And the th- the bottom line is, one, you can't control it anyway. So if you're going to get mad about somebody opening a business, they're still going to open the business. So it doesn't help you to get upset about it. You really just root for everybody. I root for everybody. That's my thing. I'm just like, I root for everybody. I hope that I'm successful. I hope that that new place is successful. I hope that we share a customer base. It's fine. You know, it's 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 just, it is what it is. You, yeah. can't, you can't control it. You know, like we said, everybody knows each other anyway. It is sort of nice to each other. And it's like on slow nights, you like asking people that you're closer with, like, hey, how are you guys doing? You guys doing? Yeah. Okay. I know it was slow last week, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. It wasn't just us. So like everybody's sort of on the same page. Everyone's in the same game. Everyone knows how hard it is with restaurants. It's 
late nights and you know all the time and weekends and so yeah. everybody's kind of in the same boat whereas i feel like if you're just someone that goes to restaurants you don't really know how hard it is so like it's like when you're in like that little community everyone sort of realizes how difficult it is and mostly supports each other yeah um, obviously there's exceptions but for the most part i haven't seen much of that since i've been here yeah everyone's pretty supportive yeah okay so now talk about i think a big turning point for me and the recognition that i was going to need help and support to sort of like keep going on this track of like entrepreneurship and opening businesses and pouring on more and bringing yeah. more into my plate and stuff having kids and like how did that impact Ooh you know, the business and the management of the business. Like for me, as soon as we found out we were pregnant with Posey, that's when we started to like elevate our team to take on more responsibility. That's when we put like Gretchen and Marcella in like sort of like the the driver's seat to carry on in the event that I just like, I had a fear. Like I, what if I just don't want to work anymore after this? Yeah. That's not what happened. If anything, I Mark quit his, <laughs> Mark quit his job and yeah. stayed home with Posey. Yeah. Having kids changed it completely. I mean, like you said earlier, we were there every night till, you know, four o'clock in the morning and now that's just not possible. Kids are a lot of work. As everyone knows, we all have kids and it's stressful and you know, they're up early. <laughs> they don't care that you were up late. And it's also, if you me, I work with my spouse too. So it's, you have all the home life pressure and then all of the work pressure is always there all the time. We didn't have managers for the first five years we were open. And then we started having to like hire people to do other stuff and eventually having managers. Now we have a great GM, Adam does a great job that sort of helps out at both places, does a lot for both places. Um, and then we have like some assistant managers too, which is something that we never had before, but it's necessary because what I don't want and what Sonia doesn't want is for my kids to hate me or grow up without me, which is like what happens a lot in the restaurant game. I remember growing up, I had a friend whose dad owned a restaurant and of course he was never home because he was at work until midnight every night. And I was just like, ah, oh, this is becoming me. Like I'm not, you know. And it's just not good. It's not like a healthy lifestyle if you have children. So you can do it and you can work nights, you know, sometimes, but you can't do that every night and mm -hmm. also maintain any kind of healthier, normal family life unless your spouse is totally cool with that and which Sonia's not. So, yeah, right. She, um, she wants you around. She likes yeah, you. Yeah, I hope so. So yeah, she wants me home and it's a conflicting feeling. I mean, our, our staff does a great job where I don't really need to be there a lot of the times at night, but I still feel compelled like I have like I should be there or something it's guilt and then I'm like I'm at home and I'm like what's happening where then I'm checking the numbers and I'm like it's some sort of always mentally there which is something I'm working on but yeah having kids definitely changes it like I want to coach my kids sports teams which I'm doing or go to their games and like you know have that kind of like routine normalcy that if I was just at the bar every night from four till midnight couldn't happen yeah so it's tough to let go. It's tough to delegate. I mean, I think that's like a skill set that is good to work on. Mm -hmm. um, and then sort of like giving them the autonomy, like like even a lot of times, you know, Mandy doesn't even tell me when shit hits the fan because she knows I right. will drop everything and show up and it's like unnecessary. You know, it's like the yeah. first time you sort of recognize that somebody else can do this. It's sort yes. of like you got to take the ego out of it. And it's like, you know, I'm That's not true. the all an all knowing answer of everything. Right. right. Like somebody else can figure the shit out. Yeah. And some people can do it better. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, good job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. boy. Yeah. Keep, um, that, keep doing it's that. Great if you have someone that wants to be in charge, too, which what we have now, like. Not all the managers want to be in charge. Like they kind of want the job. Then they're like, they just keep asking you what to do every time there's like an issue. And you're like, oh, well, I'll just go down there then if that's what it's going to be like. But we have great managers now that really embrace taking care of problems when they show up. And um, it really makes everyone's life easier. So very thankful for that. Do you feel like that became more evident during COVID? Yeah, COVID was just so, I mean, I almost have like PTSD from it. It was awful. It, it was, was just bad. like trying to like hold everything together with like string and glue and like you didn't have enough staff and you're trying to keep people happy, but you couldn't lose people. And it was just like, it was such a fine line to walk because you couldn't replace anyone because there was nobody out there. Nobody yeah. was working. At Tapper, we've had people that have been there forever, like, you know, seven, eight, nine years. And a lot of them during COVID, not a lot, a couple of them, you know, decided they they aged out of the business, which happens. And people turn about 40. They start thinking about like their knees and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know how are they, your knees they switched out my knees hurt yeah your knees hurt. hurt from what i don't know Standing? getting old playing sports i i'm always like i have to like if i don't stretch now before i like play any kind of when, athletic when thing, was, i get hurt what is the last sport you played i played pickup basketball recently um with a bunch of 25 year olds he kicked you your ass oh it was humbling <laughs> i got dunked on twice this this kid <laughs> did a windmill he caught a rebound did a windmill dunk on me i was like yo this is 
not what I signed up for. So do I you found just... out he was like some like college superstar. I'm like, <laughs> I felt better afterwards, but I was like, oh shit. I was like, wow. So do you just show up? Like, tell me how this goes. You just show up at the Y and you're like, so, hey, hey man, let yeah. me like deal me in. Pretty much. Yeah. So <laughs> a bunch of friends, we were like, oh, you know, we should go out and like play basketball and try to do something athletic. Everyone's in there, you know, early to mid forties. You know, none of us had played in a long time. I actually, I ripped both my shoes in half just from playing. It was like, <laughs> what? I don't. I got home and I was like, "Oh my god!" Uh, it was it was very humbling experience. We just showed up at the gym, and everyone there was twenty five, and we're like, you know, it was almost like like a movie joke. Like all these like dads come out that are like slightly <laughs> overweight and not in great shape. <laughs> like we held our own. We won one game, but uh, they let you win. I was so sore the next day. Oh my god! But yeah, you, you know, you're on your feet a lot. You got it. You got to be very careful about your shoes. I always tell my staff sometimes. I see them like, "What are you wearing those shoes for? Your bartending." <laughs> I'm like, you get some padding down there. I mean, you're going to be there for 12 hours. Your joints are going to need this later. So I'm all, I'm very particular about comfortable shoes, uh, good support. You're not uh, threading needles these days. No, I have not threaded the needle since I, I broke my foot threading the needle all those years ago. Tell, which is tell a shame because that was this my is, big parlor trick. This is a funny story. Yeah, so I used to thread the needle, which to people that I don't know if you're aware of kid and play. I don't know. That might be over everyone's head. Who's but, that? And that's over my head. Oh, is, is that a person? Uh, it was like a rap duo from like the 80s and 90s. They, the movie House Party. Anybody? No? So this is when Hopefully you're standing. Hopefully somebody out there knows. You're, you're standing and you jump through yeah, your foot. You jump through your, your leg. foot. Yeah, and you land in it like a jump rope. Like your leg is a jump rope. So you were threading the needle late night on Henry Street. Yeah. Somebody challenged me to a needle threading contest, <laughs> and I accepted because this was like you have to do it at weddings. I was like, oh, I can thread the needle. And this this guy was good. He was good. He was uh, he was someone that worked for us as cousin, I think. And he was doing it frontwards and backwards. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can do it backwards. And I kept hitting my shoe going back. <laughs> so I took my shoe off. This was a big mistake. So I thread the needle. I landed it for the record, but when I did so, the middle of my bone on my foot collapsed, and I had to wear a boot for two months. And then I had to walk around the restaurant and be like, "What happened to the foot?" I was like, "Uh, have you heard of kid and play? No, threading the needle." And I eventually just started like ma making something up because it was like too long of a story. I'd be like, oh, "I dropped a bowl on my foot, whatever." <laughs> but yeah, no, I have not done it since then, nor will I. That's, Don't that's do my it. last no. Even if and that was dares that you. was eleven years ago, so I'm definitely not doing it now. Even if someone dares yeah. you to do it, yeah, no, there will not be. I will pass on that challenge. I will bow out. I don't know if you remember this. I think that there is a video somewhere of us doing cartwheels at Caroline Street Pub. I, I vaguely do you remember, remember this? that. Yeah, I was doing. We were doing round offs, <laughs> which also used to be a parlor trick of mine that I no longer do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know exactly what you mean. If you had to do it all over again. Would you do it the same way, or were there were there things that you would have avoided? That's a great question. So outside of like logistical equipment stuff and layouts, there's some stuff there, but I would try to keep things as simple as possible. I used to want to have have this idea of wanting to expand and own like seven restaurants and all this other stuff, and now that is not as appealing to me at all. I do think it's important to, you have to hire good people. It's just, you can't run any company, especially a restaurant by yourself. So finding good people and then trying to take care of them is really the, the main thing that I've found that is important and that works because if they, you're invested in them, they're invested in you and they help make you make each other's lives easier. So it's really just finding good people to work with and, you know, kind of just trying to treat people like human beings. Like if, you know, like we're closed Christmas Eve and Christmas day. And like, if people need off or something, we don't say no. Like you have to have a life, which is really hard in the restaurant industry. So we try to make it feel as normal as we can for people, so that they can still have a life outside of the restaurant. I remember you and Sonia were always so serious about like interviews and meetings, and I'm just like, don't you just need somebody in the, in there? Like get somebody in there, you know? No, it's not that. But simple. it's like you really do. You'll yeah. you'll have always really taken the time to bring people in, and that's probably why you keep them for so long. Well, it's also they're the you know they're the face of your business at the end of the day. So you you know you've got to have someone that you trust to actually be representing presenting you when you're in yeah. there. So, and we've had great, like awesome employees. So we've been super lucky that way and something I'm super thankful about too. Yeah. And feedback is so valuable. It is. In the restaurant business. It really is. And if it's negative feedback, you can email me directly. But if it's positive feedback, you should do a Google review. Put it review. online. Yeah. Yeah. People don't realize, I don't think people realize how valuable that is. Like it helps so much to oh have a good God. review on Google. Yeah. Kendra, um, I think our reviews are 4.9 stars out of five. Awesome. And I'm just like, but I'm like, we need just more people. I'm like, yeah, tell your friends. 
Tell your friends, get online, write us a review. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for being here, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. All right. Look, one episode wasn't enough. We need a bonus episode. So we're coming back on Friday with a bonus episode with Ryan McFadden from Henry Shoe Taproom and Kindred. And we are talking all the things. What's on the table for Ryan in the next weekend and the coming weekends? Beer, chili, chowder, football. Do you all want to miss this one? All right, moms and dads, I got a parenting hack for you, and it's called the Hoffman Car Wash. If you are a member of the Unlimited Car Wash Club, you're in for a real treat because you can go for free, essentially, if you're paying the monthly fee. I don't know if we're doing any girl math or mom math here, but you pay the fee and you can go get a car wash as many times as you want. And it's one of those things that's like a multifaceted experience. If I'm with the kids, they love to ask the car guy, like if he can draw a little design on the window. They always play ball. They always do something fun. And then we go on through the car wash and it's almost like this thing comes over my kids. Like they're not psychopaths when we leave the car wash. It's like some sense of like therapy for them. Also form of therapy when I am by myself and I need to go to the car wash because it's the only place I can scream out loud with no judgment. So if you are not already a member of the Unlimited Car Wash Club at Hoffman, you are missing out on a treat. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And if you want to connect with me, slide into my DMs on Instagram. My handle is Katherine Hover.